Hey, how y'all doing? My name is David Childers. I'm hey. one of the four co-founders of Delta Paranormal Project, and this is Paula Westbrook. She is also co-founder. We also have got Mr. Rob Hood and Ms. Cheryl Mitchell is a co-founder too, but she was unable to make it today. I really appreciate y'all coming out. We're going to go over some interesting stuff, equipment, uh, and so, uh, also instructions, rules, regulations that we abide by, such as protocol. Uh, we also got some interesting videos up here from Amy, my ghost story, uh, my video of McNutt House, and Paula's video of private residence. So, we're going to go ahead and get started. Okay, all that right there is just half, not even half, less than half of Delta Paranormal Project. We uh, have... About what, 30 members, something like that? Yeah. Here in Mississippi alone. Right. Not including our chapters and our division team.
committed suicide in a garage that once stood right here, basically where I'm standing right now. Um, and we've discovered another unmarked grave out in the middle of the courtyard. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't tell this story last night, but it's not hot in here last night. So. Well, my wife is kind of an amateur anthropologist. And so every bone that she sees, she thinks that it's human. You know, so we find pork chop bones, steak bones, and everything else. And uh, so she'll drag them all up and show them to me, her cache of bones, and I says, yeah, that's nothing. Well, this little area right behind the building, she calls the bone yard. And she finds lots of bones. And she found a whole lot of them one time. Uh, there was a building back there that had been grazed, and in the process of grazing, they moved a lot of dirt around and apparently pretty much uncovered a grave. And my wife's out there with a little shovel digging away, and she sees bones sticking out of the ground as she keeps traveling her way along. And she calls me down all excited, check this out. And then she got to the kneecaps. <laughs> and, uh, oh, oh, stop, stop. <laughs> <laughs> we made a mistake. We learned from that mistake. And that was she called the police to tell them that she found these bones. And you know how stories go. You tell somebody a story, and then they repeat the story to someone else. By the time it gets back to you, it's not the same. You only have to tell about two people in the police department, the story ain't the same. <laughs> we wound up with half the police department out here cordoning off the area. We got crime scene tape everywhere. <laughs> and everything else. Uh, meanwhile, we've got a, a, a ladies' group who are having a meeting in the main house, and they see all this commotion going on, and they go, oh my God, it must be a drug bust. <laughs> 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 I told them, no, 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 damn. And found these bones out there. Oh my god, it was a murder! <laughs> no, 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 I don't think it was quite so severe. And um, so um, Pam was the prime suspect for one hour, and I'm standing up here. I can't go down, and she can't leave, and I'm yelling down, cover, cover. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, but she was loving it. And uh, the state anthropologist came, took a look, and uh, removed the remains and said that it, it could easily have been a Civil War grave or even prior to that. And uh, so she still finds lots and lots of bones and <coughs> brings them into the office and that's what you say. That's nice. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't so she we, learn her lesson from that? <laughs> no. uh, well, we discovered this second grave in uh, the courtyard. Uh, we learned about its, its presence from somebody that had owned the property right before us, and they took it a completely different tack. They called the coroner. We didn't do that. And the coroner came, took a look, says, yep, that's a, that's a leg bone, that person's dead, put it back. <laughs> <laughs> no big deal. They didn't wind up on Fox 40 like Pam did. <laughs> so that was interesting. Um, I hope you enjoy your stay here this evening. Uh, we've never had an experience of, you know, we're terrified, injured, and mean spirits around or anything like that. Uh, but we've had a lot of reports of feeling, you know, tugging of hair, and et cetera, et cetera. So, and it's not just from groups like you that have come here, but we're also a feature site on the Vicksburg Historic Tour. Uh, on a Vicksburg tour, and uh, people coming through the courtyard have, have indicated similar type things have happened. So if that happens, just say I'm sorry and step over. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. uh, restrooms are right here for those of you that don't know it. Uh, we do have some cold drinks in the refrigerator for model fee. And uh, we do offer day tours. They last about 45 minutes or so. Uh, to an hour, depends on how many questions were asked and everything else. Uh, it really covers all the history of the property and the previous owners. And with that, I think, have a nice evening. Mm -hmm. All right. I don't know. Someone was telling me. She knows the language. That's the history of the city really well. Mm -hmm. uh, sure, my, my.
I'd like to introduce you all to Mr. Shane Weiss and also Mr. David Westbrook. They're going to go over the technical overview. Mm -hmm. <coughs> magnetic field that's inside the wall. Yes. Yeah. It will. Yeah. It, it'll pick up wiring, uh, copper pipes. Uh, this type right here is designed basically to pick up the magnetic field generated by AC current. So yeah, if you have electrical wiring running through your house, this will identify it. It will pick it up. Uh, other things that might be, uh, create uh, what we call a fear cage is uh, breaker boxes. Uh, a lot of people that have older houses, their breaker boxes are unprotected, they're not insulated, so they, they uh, emit a very high electromagnetic field. You go down in your basement or wherever, it, or the laundry room, wherever it may be, and you get that feeling. Somebody's watching me. Uh, yeah. That's what we call a fear cage. Also, anybody here have huge stereo speakers, surround sound systems? They put off, the, Mac, the speakers themselves, astronomical amount of EMF when being used. So yeah, if you get a little jumpy or edgy when you're playing music all the time, that could be a cause. Could be an issue, but like I said, use it baseline temperatures, use it to uh, debunk uh, experiences, uh, maybe explain certain experiences people have. Next thing we're going to talk about is the mail meter. He's going to uh, pass this around. Now, the mail meter, if you look online, you're going to buy a mail meter. You got to decide which one do I want because they come in many flavors. Some come with temperature gauge built into them. Some come with a sound alarm built into them. You got the basic model, which is basically just it just reads like that one does, that like a regular EMF detector. And you have some that has a built-in uh, magnetic field that if anything breaks this, it comes. This field it will alarm. So it, a millimeter can be an all-in-one device, or it can be used just for as an individual device. We always believe never trust one piece of equipment. Always verify a reading with another similar piece of equipment. The more the more things you have a one piece of equipment doing, the less accurate it's going to be. But, uh, a little cool fact about this particular model of the mail meter. It's, uh, if you watch Ghost Adventures, it was actually on Ghost Adventures. It is a Mail 8704. The man that, that built this particular mail. 
millimeter. His daughter, Melanie, was born in 1987 and died in a car crash in 2004. So he made this in memory of her. And it, it, that was actually probably a couple months ago on, on Ghost Adventures. They, did, uh, they actually went and investigated his house. All right, Ghost Box. Let's see here. We have uh, several right here. We call this the Ghost Box. Uh, when, I, when I found this picture right here, they also called it the Frank's device. Yeah. Uh, what this is, is all it really is, is a radio that you use to continue a scan button on. Uh, there are several different theories on how the ghost box can be used and, and how the, the, the spirit of the entity will use it. Uh, we had pretty good uh, success with it here last night. Uh, we had a lot of success. Our last investigation in Ellisville. Uh, the ghost box loved David yeah. and Paula. The, the original, it's called a Frank's box. They call it a Frank's box, is a misnomer because Frank Sutton was an electrical engineer back in the late 70s, early 80s. At first, he was trying to communicate with alien life forms, but he created a device using a principal AM radio, but he kept hearing voices that he could not explain. That rhyme or reason, he would ask questions and he was getting responses. So. Frank built, they're known 79 original ghost boxes floating around out there that he built. But uh, the Radio Shack hat is a, it's on the same principle. It's constantly scanning. The theory is that the, the spirits will interact with the radio frequency and the static from the radio speakers to form words. Now, a lot, you can tell the difference between a ghost box hit and a random word from a radio <coughs> When it's something that says, oh, this is WW, you know, you can tell the rate, but when you get that <coughs> crystal clear <coughs> voice saying, hello, and we've had, uh, well, FC done a lot of curse words over the radio, and we have gotten we have been cursed out numerous a time over the ghost box. Uh, my personal experience with it. One good question. Why would you feel that uh, the, the entity preferred David or Apollo? Because the last four or five investigations that we've been on that we used the ghost box, it said David Westbrook, it said Paula, uh, it said David, uh, and it said Childress, it actually said David. I mean, it's just the yeah. last four or five investigations that we've used them on, it's yeah. continually Use his name, her name. Uh, I've got, when we were in Ovid, got my name out of it. Uh, when we were in Ellisville a couple weeks ago, it said Tom, which is another one of our investigators. And uh, I mean, that's another good reason to, to announce yourself. I mean, we'll go over and you announce yourself in the room. That gives you the chance to ask that question later. Well, 